<laughs> network fisher it's all part it's all part of the uh shadow banning going on <clears throat> hello who hello daniel taggart good to see you in the house this morning hello camp C camp sasquatch hello ej nancine hello ralph hello woody and doug in sicily mj how is the chicago crowd hello angel Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Reading some of these. Hello, Miss Jamie. Hello, Stacy. Hello, Jet and Marty and Kelly and Sissy and Tom and Hill City. Hello, Jason. Let's see about us only getting 1% or a little more. Um, the only people I know that that refers to is on the uh, bond side. Uh, so, I, yeah, I've not heard, Jason. That that's That's a new one to me. It makes no sense. But I could probably make a couple guesses as to where it's coming from. Hello, David Osmond. Hello, Live, Love, Learn. Hello, Oakville. Hello, Belmont. Hello, K. Cress. I enjoy the gymnastics uh, competition. Hello, Judy. Hello, honeybee. <laughs> I had a pretty foggy brain this morning. Took a while to get it working right for some reason. Tiny hammer. Let's get this done. Uh oh, we got uh we got a birthday right here. D Wayne. Uh, which I like the way Randy that your brother spells uh Dwayne because that's how I pronounce it for fun. So I like it. Somebody finally got my memo. Larry, good to see you in the house this morning. Hopefully things are going well for you. Hello, Conspiratary. Hello, Tilly Smith. Wow. I don't know if I can give you just a favorite band. If I had to pick just one band, period, probably Brooks and Dunn. But I got like, I could probably pick a top 10. I very much enjoy music, guys. I look at some of the iconic ones I love. Of course, Hank Jr. Got to have scars, got to have feel, Credence, Clearwater, Revival. Hmm. Lilypad, I know a number, wow, a surprising number of the original Farm Claims uh, folks, and they have not reached out to me that they have received anything. Uh, we have seen some chatter on the Pigsford uh, Farm Claims, uh, but I'm waiting for one of my original farm claim holders to get paid. And then, then guys, I'll be beyond excited. I'll be downright bouncing. I'll be like this. Hello, Miss Libby. Hello, Bella Mula. Speaking of Penny, I think she's, yeah. She's passed out on the couch behind me. After sitting on top of my keyboard half the morning, making getting ready very difficult. Uh, Firecracker loves the Eagles. 7-2-Z, it is moving faster than a speeding bullet. New York, New Mexico gal, Beatles. All right, you know, let's have a little bit of fun. You guys can hit your favorite bands in there. Stevie Ray Vaughn. Joe Charles, I absolutely believe that soon we will all get paid. I think this nightmare will finally be passed, and then we'll have all new ones to deal away with. Oh, no, I hate to hear this one. Sharon saying my sister-in-law passed away yesterday, another loss to our community. There's a couple of those things to cover, but I should probably make certain I get the obligatories done first uh, just to make certain I don't mess that one up. Waiting for it to load. If you suffer from daily pain, I need you to listen to this message carefully, guys. Now, since last night, for many of you guys that were trying to click this link, they have it fixed and straightened out. What we know about pain relief is changing forever as we age, aches, pains are normal, and we are all searching for an effective way to relieve pain. And safety is more important than ever. Let's be frank. We've all seen the horrors of the opioid crisis. You may have even been affected personally. 
And that's where a pioneering medical scientist comes in, Clint Winters. You may have seen this world-renowned health expert featured in national media. He's unveiled a natural pain reliever that is taking the world by storm. I'm talking about conolidine or lidine. Dine. It's definitely dine. Conolidine. I'm going to try to get that one right. The 100% drug-free way to get full-body pain relief without dangerous meds. As you read this, conolidine has become the go-to pain reliever for professional athletes, tens of thousands of seniors, and the official pain reliever of choice for the UFC. Clint explains how conolidine is the only compound on earth that optimizes your body's natural painkillers called endorphins at any age. When taken daily, your body will get back to relieving pain like you were in your prime in no time. And let me tell you, I was skeptical. I've heard a lot of the great reports. I'm very much looking forward to this one as I've tried a lot living with uh, the muscle disease that I have uh, been plagued with temporarily. Um, Daily aches, pains fade away, back, neck, joints, all of it feel great and feel renewed. Best of all, it does not make you feel groggy. Feel great, alert, and take on the day. Best news is Conaladon has no documented side effects after years in private testing. Hear me want to say it, it's future pain relief. So whatever you do, make sure to click the link below and check out Clint's amazing informative report on how Conaladine is changing lives by providing safe, powerful relief at a tenth the cost of pain pills. Here's the best part. You can click on it. You can act today. You can click on it, access the only product in the world with less than a dollar per day. Clint has provided this private link until midnight tonight. You are days away from finally beating pain forever. You can find it at tricono, T-R-Y-C-O-N-O.com forward slash Mark Z and see for yourself. And they do have that link working. I checked it this morning. First thing, working great. And I think they're going to go ahead and extend that uh, for another day, guys, because of the uh, problem with the links last night. A lot of people are suddenly having a problem buying Dong from Wise. Uh, sound off if anybody else is having the same issue. All right, now let's get to uh, the one we were just talking about, people praying, loss, and family. We've got another prayer request for uh, this morning, guys, let me make certain I get that one. Whoa, my inbox just exploded. Uh, this one coming from Antonio. Hi, Mark. Can you have the community say a prayer, uh, specifically at 8 a.m. Uh, West Coast, which is 11 a.m. Eastern? Uh, Antonio is having a scan to see if the cancer is, has returned. So rather than wait until the scan, I think uh, we should uh, hit it early and fast. Uh, so that we can't forget praying for a clean scan for Antonio and comfort for all of you folks. Uh, Timothy, a lot of people are saying Trump's speaking at 11. The videos uh, intimated that he was speaking yesterday at 11. So hopefully he will actually speak at 11 this morning and give us something big. I'm reading some of these. Uh, Rye Guy, uh, nobody knows uh, if Trump's making one or not. Most of the uh, chatter said he should have made it yesterday at 11, if it's not a deep fake. Uh, my guess is if he announces anything, it's going to be his VP running mate. That's just my guess. I think we're reading too much into this. I think we're getting trolled. We'll find out though. Troy, sure, appreciate the four of you guys there in Branson praying for Antonio and the others in need. Now, Tom, I love, I love the knowledge in this one. Um, Horse Whisper got a Twitter per what's a Twitter personality? I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Horse Whisper. Tom giving us a natural painkiller. Pineapple, a hole chopped into chunks, turmeric, quarter pound of ginger, quarter pound of cayenne. Whoa. Three teaspoons of black pepper, two teaspoons and one cup of hot water. Blend and strain. I'm willing to try it. I have to get you to email it to me. 
Uh, there are a number of fake accounts uh, going on right now, claiming to me, claiming to be me, trying to uh, help you guys personally with uh, your crypto. It's not me. I'm never going to reach out to you and do that. Uh, some of you guys asking for my opinions on things. I think it's best if I don't give them. Yeah, horse wrist for there you go. He started talking to me about crypto. Yeah. Immediately when they do that, go ahead and report them as a fake because it is not me. Definitely not me. Oh, I just noticed the time, guys. We have got to speed it up. While it has been fairly quiet on the RV directly front as far as what is going on in Iraq or Venezuela, et cetera, individually, guys. Uh, and it has been uh, lots of expectations. I lost another bondholder uh, early this morning. Well, that's when I got the message. Theoretically, I lost them uh, overnight last night uh, as they have been asked to go quiet, but not an official NDA as they believe their payment is pending. Um, but just wanted me to know, hey, it looks like it's pending. We are going to go quiet out of precaution before having to sign an NDA. They just want to play it safe. Uh, we've got more movement, do have a, I'm going to call him a massive whale, but he's somewhere in between a whale, a paymaster and a group leader. I don't know how to describe that, uh, has been asked to go ahead and pack the bag and get to Reno. And I hope that is a positive sign as well. Uh, been a lot of travel requests that started, um, earlier that, well, only in the last day or so to get headed West. So I hope that is a good sign. 36 countries apply to join BRICS Alliance in 2024. Uh, they don't give us the specifics of which. They just tell us that they are developing countries. Of course, these will be commodity-rich countries. 36 applied just in 2024. That's on top of 2023. And that is so far. This one is uh, huge news as uh, BRICS is gaining massive steam. Now, let's get into the troubled economy around the world. Country Garden bonk to expose extent of China's property crisis. This one in Bloomberg. Liquidity issues that developers burden China's economy. Property drag weighs on Chinese banks, including ICBC, Bank of China. Uh, we're going to keep moving because now uh, in true form and fashion, the Chinese government would like to blame all the rating agencies. And they have a good argument here. CNR, CSC, and other intermediaries may be liable for Evergrande real estate fraud bond issue case. What they're saying here, and we've got another one here, Chinese authorities scrutinize PWCs, that's Price Waterhouse's role in Evergrande fraud case. These are the companies that rate the bonds. In one case, one of the ones rating the bonds, they didn't really exist. They created bonds out of thin air. They weren't actually attached to anything, it appears. Um, just part of a well, fraud uh, to get more money to keep developers afloat. It's uh, getting very interesting, these rating agencies. And I don't know about the Price Waterhouse uh, one yet. I haven't had a chance to dive into that story as deeply as I would like and vet it. Uh, but it appears that they were not doing their due diligence. So these folks were like, hey, no, we've got this kind of bond rating, this kind of bond rating here, look here, putting it in front of them. And while they did have those bond ratings, they shouldn't have had those bond ratings. So people feel the Chinese government thinks it's going to be easier to throw the blame on some of them instead of the Chinese government for not having controls in place. This was going to be an interesting one to uh, watch play out. Uh I can probably take this off and we're going to get to stuff very quickly. So we'll be ready for Mr. C. <laughs> I'm reading some of these comments. I don't understand why people do it. All right. Uh, did you spot the grill in the Fed's meeting room? Uh, simply that our monetary policy is already switched before they drop. Uh, Inflation already starting to spike and they're ignoring it. A good read for those that want to get into what's really happening in the economy uh, and look past the shell game. Uh, we do have some other developments and I am going through them quickly because I really want to maximize our Mr. C time. I know I always say it, but I'm going to make it happen today, daggone it. The CIA's role in the Biden crime family's activities in Ukraine. 
Ukraine begin to surface? Brian Cates doing a uh, good one. This one's just a short one. He gives a uh, overview of it and warns us, or I shouldn't say warns us, lets us know that in the coming short days, we are going to see a lot of disclosure. I'll just read it for you because I think it's worth it. Um, some of the stuff to anticipate uh, in the next few days, possibly as early as over the weekend or very first of next week. Talk about a major plot twist for the norm normies out there. The intelligence agency's role in guiding and supporting, shielding, directing the Biden crime family's activities in Ukraine just entered the movie from stage right. Normies are about to begin to discover why it was so very, very important to the deep state to impeach President Trump and try to remove him from office right after he did the perfect phone call with Zelensky about what the Biden crime family was doing in Ukraine, as well as the CrowdStrike report and the DNC server being in Ukraine. The Bidens are and always have been CIA blob assets. That's why they have been protected until now. But now that the CIA State Department Pentagon role in directing, ordering, protecting the Biden crime family as it went about its various nefarious international activities is being dragged out of the tall grass and into the open. And a massive public spotlight is about to be shined on it. How much longer until the blob cuts its losses and tosses the Bidens over the side of the ship to stop the exposure? CIA will absolutely throw the Bidens under the bus rather than themselves. And that is incoming. Uh, Joe, let's see, Mark, banks, ATMs, DMV, cell service was down most of the day and night in northern New Jersey last night. Any word from anyone? I've not heard anybody specifically on it. If somebody else has uh, experienced something similar in Jersey, uh, sound off. Reading a few of these, then diving back in. <laughs> Tommy took, I can drive the bus. They need a driver. <laughs> Love it. Uh, liberals survive non-confidence vote on Carmen tax with block NDP backing. Oh, Pulver, conservatives urge MPs to topple the government over pending increase to carbon levy. You know, honestly, they did better in that vote than they thought. And this is just for uh, my folks up in Canada. You're starting to stand up. I shouldn't say you guys. You've been there. What I'm starting, what I'm saying is some of your politicians are finally at least trying to stand up. Uh, they lost their vote on it, but they made a much better showing than they have recently. I'm still a little uh, disappointed. They had roughly a third standing up to the insanity when they used to walk much more lockstep. <laughs> oh, boy. Why does the Conservative Party want to continue to mislead Canadians? They really think they're stupid. They want to get Canadians upset. They want them mad. Yeah, they want them screaming for their freedom. He mocked the Conservatives over their opposition to the tax. Pointing out this tax, guys, it's all about, you know, let's rein in global carbon, this, that, whatever. In other words, let's not do it so we can shift it to the third world. Um, but he mocked them. Today's Conservative Party, referring to the Conservative Party in, in Canada, is a MAGA right-wing party, he said, citing former U.S. President Donald Trump's Make America Great Again slogan. Well, for me then, that means I support the conservatives. Canada. Let's see. Bon Bon. Yes, friends in New Jersey and in Eastern PA lost phone and internet. Tommy Took. Yeah, we're starting to see cracks in the UK government as well. We've seen massive push in Scotland, Ireland, and uh, England, the UK, for, I mean, some to allow government to do just crazy censorship stuff for persecution of those that use free speech. Uh, it has been, it is a worldwide war. It is not just the United States. On that front, Squatter Squad gets yes, a real website. Squatter Removal and Prevention Services. We offer fast and effective squatter removal and prevention services throughout Southern California. 
Our job is to save our customers from all the wasted time, money, stress, and headaches that come from squatters overtaking your property. Hey, you can call them. You can hire them. See, feel free to email, call, or text us. You may also fill out our online intake form. Yeah, who do you have? What do you need to do? Have the squatters received mail with your property address on it? All the things they need to do to remove them for you. I've been waiting for this. You know, next, I guess, is going to be vigilante justice where, you know, you start paying protection gangs. They go in there and for the right money, they make your problem go away. Capiche? Or they just get a lot of really pissed off locals that band together and go house to house cleaning it. And those are the ones who get arrested. Earth girl at play. An old joke in Canada. How do you get Canadians to pay more tax? Just ask them. <laughs> Quarter right. Go away with military. Yeah, no, it's. It's a temporary thing at best, but it is still absolutely nuts. Uh, conservative, we've all been hearing about this uh, meeting with Sudani and the states, guys, and we are still looking for it. It has been nuts. Hand tap. March 22nd birthday. Happy birthday. Let's see. Chris Five. can anyone... Confirm large movements of National Guard troops and military machinery this week in several states like Florida, PA, Ohio, California, New York, possibly others. Chris, we have seen very abnormal air traffic, especially. I, I can only imagine what today's, if Monkey Works does one today, what it's going to look like if he does a sit rep. Because uh, we have been noticing massive amounts of National Guard movement and especially uh, large transport um, aircraft. I'm going to make it on time to Mr. C, daggone it. I'm proud of myself. What are we doing? Anna Kasparian flips out over after suspects in murder dismemberment case released in New York. Why is, why is this special? Anna Kasparian is part of the Young Turks. Very left and progressive. And boy, I tell you, they're pissed off. They said, if this, what it, this is what it means to be a Democrat, then I don't want to be a Democrat. Then I'm not a Democrat anymore. See if I can get to her exact. Uh, eh, I listened to it. I don't know if it gives the text. on. All right. So what happened? What had happened was in a shocking underreported story about the absolute state of New York's bail reform laws has, has now gone viral. After left-wing journalist Anna Kasparian went on an epic rant against policies that her fellow Democrats absolutely voted for. It appears that it took New York releasing suspects in a double murder dismemberment case to start red pilling the wine grannies on The View, a story which made its way to Kasparian. <clears throat> Earlier this month, three roommates were charged with hiding pieces of two mis dismembered bodies, which were hacked up with meat cleavers and then scattered around Long Island. The suspects, Stephen Brown, 44, Jeffrey Mackey, 38, and Amanda Wallace, 40, along with homeless woman Alexis Neves, 33, allegedly tried to conceal the corpses in what the New York Post called a scheme so grisly that the drains, toilets, sinks, and showers stopped working in the Amityville home where the three of the accused had just moved weeks earlier. Suffolk County prosecutors claimed whatever led up to the deaths and hacking, the four allegedly removed sharp in instruments, multiple body parts, and other related items from the two-family house in Amityville Road. Railroad Avenue between February 27th, when the first remains were found by a child walking to school. And Monday, when cops raided the home, Suffolk police said, yeah, so they raid the home. They arrest the folks. All kinds of evidence everywhere. Body parts, stuff uh, down the drain, other body parts around. Guilt's probably foregone here. I mean, certainly we like to know what the rest of the story is. But it wasn't worth holding them on bond or keeping them in jail until time for a uh, trial. Yep, catch and release. I don't know about you, uh, the real Amityville horror. I've been waiting, Ellie, for somebody to say that one. Glad I wasn't the only one thinking it, though. 
just let out. And we'll see if they make it to trial or not. Don't know if I'd make it if I were them, but I don't want to put anything. Wait a minute. Let's uh, make certain I do not mess this up. Uh, it's not about Trump. And this is what I was getting at earlier. American C.J. Hopkins charged again in Germany describes global censorship effort. Well, <clears throat> here's the front of his book, The Rise of the New Normal Reich. This is going into the crazy um, authoritarian approach to masks, to lockdowns, to censorship, you name it. And see the little bit of a swastika on the mask? Well, he was referring to the rise of the new normal right, meaning how Nazi like the mainstream uh, government, global government was during the lockdowns and the overreaction of COVID. Well, they think he's trying to whip up hate Nazism and that he's anti. They're going after him for how he used it. No, I don't think so. That is their claim. The case got tossed out uh, the first time, but there's no such thing as the whole double, double jeopardy thing in Germany. So they're going to try to retry. The prosecution appealed it to attempt again, although they completely flubbed it the first time. They'll flub it again the next time. Uh, but it's the persecution because he came out against the mainstream narrative or he came out against the government narrative because it's not really the mainstream narrative. Mainstream at this point is mainstream has awakened. 20, 30 percent of the people, man, they are still out there nuts, uh, spouting poor science, uh, corrupting science uh, for yeah, follow the money. But this is worldwide uh, and CJ points it out that it is not just here. And this is an interview that he did with Matt Tabibi. So Matt Tabibi is writing this piece. Let's see if I can find one of these that I just love. There was a great in here, but it is. They, they break it down into the global move to suppress free speech, to gaslight people. Uh, Matt Tabibi is doing just a heck of a job on this front. I'm uh, I'm loving it. Now I covered what I wanted to before we get to Mr. C. I haven't heard anything more about the Rhode Island man and woman they found in pieces. They said it was done by MS-13. You know, at what point do we just say we're done? We're done living like this. We're done living like crazy. Uh, hey, Mark, what about the homeowner in New York who was beaten to death and left in a duffel bag by squatters? There's such a thin line, such a thin line. And I don't think that proper mankind fought very hard to develop Western civilization. No, it's not perfect. We're not going to have a perfect civilization again until Christ returns. But it has taken quite literally the deaths of millions and millions, perhaps billions of patriots throughout the many years, decades, centuries, etc., to develop some kind of civilization that is calm, peace-loving, where we can have great advancements, we can study science, develop the arts, all of those things. And this generation of authoritarians seem hell-bent on throwing away all of that progress so that we can descend into utter chaos. All the norms of society that have been developed over that time in order to help society cope and deal. Structures, infrastructure, uh, roads, property rights, so that you can own the fruits of your own labor. And they are very quickly, quickly throwing it onto the ash heap. They're trying to put us back in the dark ages, take hundreds and hundreds of years away so that they can have their own little fiefdoms. Not on my watch. That's all I'm going to say about that. Not on my watch. Uh, Gaming Terry, you know, I kind of actually had that thought today. I love this country, but if things do not change, and I'll take my money and leave the states, a lot of people are considering that uh, and renouncing their citizenship. Now, before you knee jerk to that, I would have no problem renouncing my citizenship in the corporate 
United States. I would never give up my citizenship in the Republic. All right, Mr. C, you may have to try again. I was almost quick enough. Hopefully the phone will work here with the mic set here. I would have to look at myself in exile, maybe go to some place like Argentina for a few years. Fight digitally from abroad to try to make the changes. You know, at what point is enough enough? All right, Mr. C, if you're hearing us, give us a call. Let's try to make this one work. Hey, can't we all just get along? Liberals, conservatives, squatters, and homeowners? Uh, gaming tear, yeah. El Salvador is exponentially safer than the U.S. now. That was not true just a few years ago. It's amazing what doing the right thing is and, and the difference it makes. Jeff Spicoli, <laughs> what Jefferson was saying was, hey, you know, we left this England place because it was bogus. So if we don't get some cool rules ourselves pronto, we're just going to be bogus too. Get it? I love that Gypsy Baron. Right, here we go. Mr. C, it's good to have you in the house. Well, good morning, Mark. Uh, my phone rang on your side, and then my phone went dead. So I had to reboot. Ah, uh, that is not a surprise. That is not a surprise. Uh, I want to apologize this morning. Uh, I may not be uh, sounding very good. I'm still dealing with the bug that I got a week ago. And you just when you think you got erected, it comes back and hits you again. I'm still struggling with the bug on things. So sorry about that. Hey, if you want us to send uh, some immunity and some uh, nutritional stuff, you just let me know. It'll get headed your direction. I'm fine right now. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I'll let you cover whatever you may want to cover first, and then we'll launch into questions. Okay, very good. Uh, first off, Nevada Handyman Bob, thank you very much. I appreciate your comments and everything else that you said. <laughs> uh, Lyman, uh, thank you much. You're my, um, you're my center song. Thank you. Okay, Mark, far away. All right, we're going to hit one or two, and then uh, we do have some uh, questions that people are hoping You'll bring some enlightenment to, or some clarification to. I saw okay. Stephanie's, and I wanted to hit it straight out of the gate. Said, Mark, I have a question for Mr. C. Will 501-3C still be a thing for humanitarian aid if the IRS goes defunct? Um, go ahead. I think so, yes. Um, those are uh, basically hospitals, uh, nonprofits that serve the communities, other nonprofits. Uh, Spent a long time in that in that side of the industry, and I don't see a problem with that happening. Actually, I mean, I think they'll maintain their their uh, their tax basically a tax free status. Um, yeah, I, I just wonder if we're not going to have an income tax, whether it's going to be necessary, or if it's a VAT style tax and it's only on purchases. Maybe we still will have a version for the five hundred one three Cs, etc., so that they don't have to pay the sales tax when they purchase. To do those humanitarian things. That's a, that's the only reason I could think to still have it. But that is just oh, me from outside. Excuse me. A lot of that has to do with state taxes and federal taxes. Uh, not necessarily on income, but on everything. Uh, it affects everything, depreciation, the whole bit. It's it's quite extensive. But the goal of the 501c3s is basically to promote the, uh, the betterment of the community. I don't see that being a taxable event for anybody. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't either. Uh, could be wrong. This isn't professional advice. This is for uh, entertainment and education. We always have to say that. Cover ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. And at least until sanity returns to the legal system. Whatever that is. Right. Um. Yeah. All right. Uh, one of the biggest questions I have had is, is anybody capable of describing tiers? You know, they constantly refer to them as tiers or level three or level four or three, three, you know, tier three or four A or four B. Um, do you want to attempt to do that in an understandable way? Well, 
Okay. Uh, tears is a, uh, let's back up. When the gold treaty started out, uh, based on the 1970 Brussels, there were levels, uh, governments, nonprofits, uh, various uh, entities that were, that were promised money uh, by treaty, by senior, and it was never paid. So all that comes off the books immediately. That's the first go round. That's, that's happened. Uh, however, they cannot spend the money because uh, the gold treaty is gold back, so uh, they can't recapitalize the rats with gold money, gold back money. When we started back in, what was it, 04, 05, 6, 7, 8, 9, with Reno and Wales, they came up with tiers to describe who was going to go in first, second, third, fourth, and I think it was an ego trip for all these whales myself. That's where it came from, as well as it was a sting operation against the Iraq politicians, uh, the Clintons, uh, Pelosi, and L. So, with regard to the RV, we are at the level of level three, at the tail end of level three. That's when they come see me with the codes. And at that point, uh, everybody gets paid across the board. And it's a total open release around the world. Uh, as soon as I put the codes in, I unlock the uh, the gold coin. So uh, tiers are misleading. I know there's there's three, four, five, whatever, but they're only uh, relevant as far as uh, exchanging dinars in with whales. Okay. Um, got another question for you. Somebody was looking for you know what what's an historic bond. And how would Zim fit into that? They're like, you know, we talk about historic bonds, but they're like Zim's a bond. Um, so what's the historic bonds that we're talking about? The historic bond goes back to the 1800s, more, more or less, uh, with the Chinese uh, buying bonds to support the building of railroads, which they were a considerable part of the labor force. And this is before the, and I forget the date, when Congress passed a, uh, a discrimination law against Chinese, okay, they could not hold property, they, they were actually deported. So, but the historic bonds go back to that point. Uh, they are invested monies by the Chinese, and they were never paid because they were Chinese. Uh, that's going to get taken care of in the levels of uh, previous uh, debt that has to be paid off. Uh, they will be paid but they will not be allowed to uh, uh, spend the money's economic receipt until I put the codes in. Otherwise, we are re uh, hypothecating, refinancing the rents. Um, yeah, exactly. And that oh, is. And the, I'm sorry, I didn't address the Zim. I thought uh, the Zim is not considered, in my viewpoint, from what I've seen, an historic bond. It is only a mechanism by the government to offset. A lack of funds, essentially. So they created money out of bonds. Uh, a way of distributing more more humanitarian funds. That's how it was described to me. Yeah. Um, that it is not, in a classical sense, being considered a historic bond. Um, time for happy dance. Boy, I tell you, this is one that de definitely uh, gets my goat a bit. So it was stated that all the DSR, deep state rats, must be gone before this goes. Um, said there are still millions functioning and doing evil. Will this ever go? Always an excuse. What say you, Mr. C and Mark Z? One, I don't know who stated that all of them had to be gone first because that's crap. But your thoughts, Mr. C? Well, I know that the uh, leaders, quote unquote, of the corporation, of the rat operation, will be picked up. They already have shadows. Uh, what they're referring to here is the Golden Dragon is and the successor are very, very concerned about the safety of the funds as we transfer transition into the RV and the QFS. The problem is every time they try to flick the switch and go to the gold back currency from 2004 on, Every time they tried, the rats get whack-a-mole, and they came up with a new way to steal the money. So what they're concerned about is, you know, is the money, is the gold-backed funds, are the gold-backed funds safe when released to the public? 
So you, when you have access, you don't have to worry about someone stealing. Number one criteria, safety of funds. Number two, transparency. Number three, rule of law. So a lot of it, basically all of this delay is, is based on the fact that the monies cannot be presumed safe until the Golden Dragon sees the field as being level and most, if not all, if not all, of the rats being picked up. We estimate, and I've heard the number, anywhere between one and five million will be picked up in that time frame. That's, logistically, it's hard to believe they can pick up five million in a two hour time period. So, but who knows? I do know that the that the uh, Interpol guys have all the major people uh, tracked, shadowed with, with cuffs ready to pick them up as soon as they come see me. All right. Two hours. No, it should be a whirlwind. It's going to be like one of those Elliot Ness type things on a hundred, like yeah. on a worldwide scale. Uh, yeah. Miss Doe said, "Do you have any contacts in Iraq anymore?" Absolutely, we've talked about them a few times this week, Miss Doe. Um, let's see. Uh, why would a foreign currency holder? Oh, there's this big one running around right now. I guess somebody put out that currency holders are only going to get 1% of their money and then tranched over time. And that is just absolutely nothing I've heard. But boy, it's got the community with uh, running around like Chicken Little. Uh, but Roy asking the question, why would a foreign currency holder only get paid a small percentage uh, if the RV QFS is gold backed? And there's reportedly plenty of it. That's wrong. It's a lie. And uh, the NFL guys had one very interesting comment to me. And this was back in June of 2014. Stop listening to the rats. It's easy. These people don't know what they're talking about. They, they, uh, what they're looking for is an avenue into your money. Other than that, there's blowing blue smoke. Um. Yeah, and Chad asking the question, if the QFS is all it is said to be, why would the rats be an issue? They can track, control, movement of funds. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're, you're talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're talking about a transition of hundreds of trillions of dollars from one system to another, one fiat to gold back. That creates a slim margin of, shall we call it, error. That's a possibility. You never know. How far up the corruption goes in a bank, the bank will have access to pay monies that are still in a system that are fiat. That are, remember, fiat money is being automatically turned into gold back currency, no matter what country you're in. So there's a sliver of time when the gold back is just being implemented where they have a chance to snag money. If they get fiat transferred to an account that's theirs and it becomes a gold back currency immediately, they have succeeded in stealing your money. That's why. Um, uh, Mo Pani and Mickey just uh, trying to put a correction in. They actually said 1% for Zim, not other currencies. Now, that would make sense to me, uh, Mo Pani and Mickey, if they only gave up 1% of that uh, so people could put together their properly structure their. Uh, Humanitarian projects and stuff like that, and then issue more. Now that would make sense. That, may, that makes may, a lot of. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Mark. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me because when we talk about with a bond, you're talking about underlying security, whether it's hypothecatable or whether it is strong enough to allow them to make the payments. And when you when you set up a, a bond structure, you're never looking at a hundred percent payout immediately, except upon maturity. Um, all right, Bearcat, Mark and Mr. C. So when the dust settles from the RV, what will interest rates be if there is interest anymore or usury rates? Well, that's a good question because we, although we do not talk about it, it becomes a uh, uh, an operation of law because if you look at the history of banking in the Islamic countries, a maximum interest rate of 7% is allowed by the Quran. Other than that, you get your head chopped off or your hands or whatever. Now, with regard to the RV, I understand that usury laws will be come back into effect, and that tells me that most likely you're talking about a max of seven percent. Um, yeah, I would think. Uh, and to me, it would be a fair amount. <laughs> DNA defines you. 
why don't all the gurus get together and deliver one consistent message that to we the people? Boy, I wish um, the last time that the and we'll call it the guru community was more of a cohesive unit was uh, when Oki was a much healthier individual. And then between Sweet Queen and Oki, people would literally go back and forth and gurus would vet things back and forth to see if they were getting it as circle tell or from the same sources or whatever. It's it's a wild, wild west now. And honestly, I believe uh, we have a tremendous number of amount, excuse me, not number, a tremendous amount of disinformation being thrown at, uh, we'll call them Intel people, gurus, whatever you call them. I know I've had to rule out a number of my sources because uh, when I really did a deep dive in chasing, uh, they didn't have the best intention with their information. Too much of it was coming from uh, pre-written government disinformation, in my opinion. Do you think that occurs, Mr. C? I believe the gurus, quote unquote, around the world right now, uh, and I do not associate myself with gurus. Uh, it's not, I'm not an expert. I'm just the one who lived it. They are ex disinformation specialists. They get paid various ways behind the scenes to cause chaos. That's their job. Now, I'm sure a lot of them have ego problems, but that's not the issue here. When you put out information and you say it's real and it's actually disinformation, you are setting yourself up actually for a, a shackles to be placed upon you by, uh, by the Interpol guys, because that is still fraud. Hey, it makes sense to me. Um... Definitely been approached to try to get me just to mockingbird repeat things. And that just, heck no. I'm going to try to find the truth, period, so I can sleep at night. I may miss the mark on occasion, but not for a lack of trying to hit the mark. I've had people try to buy me, and I tell them no, and they just uh, are incredulous and then walk away. <laughs> I've had the same response, Mr. C. <laughs> Life would be easier if I were for sale, though. I guess. Absolutely. But then you'd have to look at yourself in the mirror. You'd have to sleep with yourself. You'd have to fuck. How do people that sell themselves like that function? I don't understand it. I've realized that the people that I've, that I've met in this crazy quote unquote business, most of the guys who do this stuff for old ladies are compartmentalized. They do not see the, uh, they, they become the lawyers macro. essentially. Yeah. A lawyer never sees black and white. They see gray. They see little aspects of little black here, little light there. That's what le our legal system is based upon, uh, arguing the grayness of the law. I think that's what these people do. Uh, yeah, and I would like to point out, many of the folks that have been used to spread misinformation slash whatever, the overwhelming majority good people just being fed a line that sounds good to them. Uh, and you know, they're not doing it with ill intention, but they're being used in an ill way. Um, I have no doubt that, you know, it's happened to me uh, at some point as well, where you feel like, hey, this, uh, this, this, this checks out, that source appears to be a good one. And then you repeat it and then you find out, well, I got to walk that back because that wasn't right. Um, but I mean, that happens. That happens even in responsible, respectable journalism in the world where a source lies to you. Uh, let's see. I know I just got totally sidetracked on that one. Someone asked, oh, Jay, anyone, uh, income tax will get back. Do you think we'll get this before we made our appointments? I don't think that's going to happen simultaneously. I know it's in the works. I know they've, they're ready to uh, distribute those funds. They may distribute them, uh, what shall we say, electronically, but I don't know the, the actual process. But I, I think it's uh, a little crazy to think you're going to get the money back before you have your appointment. I really do. Yeah, that kind of makes sense to me. Uh, Rocket Man saying, God forbid if Mr. C passes away before the codes are ready, who takes over that responsibility? You know, I don't know who they pick, but Mr. C, you want to tackle it? I know you've done this one a lot. It's okay. All the trustees have backups to backups to backups. Uh, that part I'm not worried about. Um, let me see if I can. I'll find a, a quote from the Interpol guys who were telling me 
There's something like uh, 30, 40,000 people involved. It's huge. <clears throat> Maybe more. Um, yeah, uh, a, a lot of backups. Um, I was going to get into some of them where we've seen a backup replaced, uh, but it probably isn't the best thing to out an individual signatory. So I'm, I'm going to just hold that one in. You there were a couple back in the year, uh, what shall we say, 2010, 20, uh, 2007 and on. There were several that were replaced, some of them with the Rothschilds that were replaced. So it, it does happen. And I would like to point out, I know of a good Rothschild. Um, that's part of the process and he has been absolutely instrumental in moving this thing and fighting through it. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't throw everybody under the bus. Just most of them. You too. Why can't we call it a lie, a lie anymore? Misinformation or disinformation or lies. Ah, uh, now we're getting into the real meat, meat of, the, of the subject here. We're talking about, um, psyops. This has been going on for 70, 80 years. Since World War II, we have been psyoped by the CIA, NSA, etc. And now they've turned with this wokeness. A lie is truth, and truth is lie. Gee, that should remind you of something. 1984. Uh, all they're doing is take old scripts and they're making them real. Why are they making them real? Because the Rothschild slash senior operation assaulted. All of the Fortune 500 corporations, their board of directors, their internal operations with pro, uh, what shall we call them, Bush senior people. We'll just call them CIA since he ran the CIA and it's instrumental. We'll just go, we'll, we'll just use that one. That's, that's a safe, you know, boogeyman right now. Uh, that's what he did. He coerced everybody in the military and the CIA and politicians with money, sex, uh, actual threats, torture. Uh, it's it's really when you get into it, it's very very interesting and very very sickening. Yeah, it really is. Um, absolutely is. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, here's one that to me has just you know never mattered. Last week, a well-known respected person said, "Mr. C is no longer be putting in codes." In my opinion, sometimes we just have to let it go. For me, Elizabeth, that's the way to go. For me. I absolutely 100% believe Mr. C is still there. I had some verification recently. It made me feel good about it. But at the same time, does it really matter who does it as long as it all gets done? Um, so for people to fight over it doesn't make sense to me, Mr. C. I have great faith that you are still that person. But um, to me, it's just not worth having a fight over. Well, when one looks at the situation, I understand this. There's so many people out there who think they're uh, it's me, it's me, it's me. No, I look at this. I got screwed 34 years ago in a huge way. They blackballed me, they stole my companies and my name, my signature, and they marketed me around the world. Fine. I haven't received a dime from these guys for any of the efforts that I made in 34 years. Okay, fine. So we're talking about the fact that these guys want to make sure that I don't get anything. It doesn't matter. We know for a fact that there's a $7 trillion gold certificate with my name on it yet to be delivered to me. If that's all I get, so be it. Who the hell cares? Right. I can't spend $7 trillion the rest of my life. Uh, I'll, uh, if I left the 200, I'm like, but, uh, hey, dude, know, I'll help you. you know, really? I mean, we're going to have lots of fun doing it. But do I care who actually puts the codes in? No. Do I care that they deliver the $7 trillion? Damn right I do. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, there does seem to be, because we talk about this from a very U.S.-centric model, because we're here, so U.S. this. I mean, it makes sense we do it this way. Uh, but o Odie Doki asking, uh, will Ireland have to wait until after all this, until after this all happens in America? No, it's going to be worldwide immediately. The whole idea of the pile of gold that the bullion that I really see with the codes is worldwide to all of the signatories to the Gold Treaty, plus. That's 209, 214, 217, I don't know. But that's immediate. That's absolutely simultaneous. Uh, no one waits in line. Ireland's right there with us. Um, <laughs> oh, Maverick, I understand if you say CIA three times, they will jump out of your television. It's like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'm not saying it the third time. <laughs> 
That's about right. I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll tell you. Part of the problem I think I keep getting these damn bugs is the fact that I'm under this constant stress of are mm. they going to hit me today? Are they going to mm. destroy the computer today? Uh, it's just unbelievable. No, 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 no. That just that day-to-day -day stress of being who you are in that position. The fact that you have learned to deal with it as well as you have is quite literally amazing. To me too. Um, all right. Uh, here's one, and I don't know if you want to touch on this. For me, I don't think it makes any sense to bash anybody individually slash whatever, because a number of people have been told that they have key roles that probably don't have key roles. Uh, but this one in particular said, Mr. C, can you expound on Kim Gujan, Gojan, whatever it again, uh, again, please? Well, there's not much I can say. I don't know who, that is, who she is. But what I will say is this. Show me the gold bag money. If you've got it, show it. If you don't, what the hell is your problem? A lot of folks claim, and we'll find out, guys. Hit, history will answer all of these questions. Um I'm a little salty today. Sorry about that. Oh, no, 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 no. They much prefer you when you're a little bit salty. So, um, so that one is perfectly okay. <laughs> Dave, Mr. C, have you seen prices lately? Seven trillion doesn't buy what it used to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. Yes, I agree. Uh, it could go very quickly. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I do get a kick out of when they're like, oh, there's just not that much money in the world. And then we read a report not long ago showing uh, about 150 trillion U.S. dollars in circulation outside of the United States. So when I look at them and they're like, uh, no, but it can't be worth this or that. I'm like, I don't think you guys really understand how the real world is working right now. I'd like to uh, talk about it aside for just a moment. Speaking about how much money there is in the world, uh, in October, uh, of twenty of two thousand seven, I um, drove Leo Wanta and I to Alexandria to go to a federal hearing uh, in one of his one of his lawsuits. And Judge Oberdorfer was sitting on the bench, and he was going on and on and on, ridiculing Leo as he was trying to testify that there's no way in hell, under God's green earth, that there's ten trillion dollars around the world in money. No way. Because uh, there's 20 or 30 times that. That's right. Just in the stock market alone, there was 10 trillion. I mean, and he would not look at me. He would not. He allowed me to sit there uh, in front of the bench, which I was surprised at because I'm not a lawyer. And, uh, but it was just amazing. He would not look at me. He would not, he would not address me. Uh, it, was, it was quite a fascinating event. But it's amazing. Would you ever consider kind of burying the hatchet just to get the education out there and do kind of a history with Leo? Um, because, boy, I tell you, I, I do think he realizes that a number of times he got used by the Bush camp, but I, I've not you know, spoken with directly or with. But I've had a number of people ask me if you would ever uh, or the two of you would ever consider that because you're about the last two left of the uh, four uh, horsemen of the economic reset. Well, the third guy is still walking around. But that's okay. Um, with regard to Leo, you know, I don't know if we could actually sit in the same room and, and talk about this stuff because what he did with Chris was just unbelievable. And it was un, very unfair. And uh, what what he did to me was incredible too because we have signed agreements, documents, affidavits, all kinds of stuff where he made promises and I did the work and I never got paid. Never got paid a dime. They were offered a dime. Never got paid a dime. So, with regard to sitting down and doing history, I would rather have a complete panel of those people who are actively involved. I'd like to sit down with David Rockefeller and ask what what the hell he was doing, deciding the fate of billions of people in the world when he thought he could rule the world. And he, by the way, he's the one that did. Almost all of the transactions for the uh, profiting for the rats. So he's a character that should be uh, up on a scaffold somewhere. But with regard to Leo, I think so much dirty water has passed under the bridge between us. I just don't see that happening. Um, yeah, you did, French Tommy. There's so many just uh, folks that have been in this thing from the beginning. And I'm just using nicknames so that I don't get anybody in trouble. Um, it would be. 
it would be interesting. I think the world could use that panel sitting down and just giving us the facts from the point of view of all the different parties and what they went through to get here. And uh, yeah, after this thing, and you know, I know two or three of them would probably be willing. That's an interesting idea. And it's, it's interesting only other, including the fact that this is all compartmentalized. I had a slight view of how this thing worked and I wrote about it, but a lot of other people only saw what was in their, in their um, asylum. That was mm. it. So, but if you get them talking and you start talking specifics and you can actually see it go to the top. And from my, my vantage point, I can see overall because of where I was with regard to the Golden Dragon, Interpol, and uh, Marvin Timber Trust, which we're still fighting. It, uh, it, it could be quite fascinating and, and very educational. Yeah, and one of the things to remember, they have so compartmentalized this thing that you're going to have one group not knowing what the other group's doing, and that is all on purpose so that they couldn't derail it. At the same time, it's created an inherent weakness in the process as well because of the lack of transparency. Um, but yeah, a number of people, because they are looking at a very micro, it's like the difference between talking to a micro economist and a macro economist. Macro is going to look at the bigger thing. Micro is going to look at the really involved little charts and try to follow this or that, but miss the entire bigger end of where things are going because they're focused on a little piece. Uh, that's also just the difference in human nature between some people and other people. Some people are big picture. Some people are small picture. Well, I got pressed, the old, uh, the old English way, pressed into service because they wanted my broker dealer and one of the companies. So uh, I was a, a victim more than anything else. But so be it. Um, and boom, week the war is upon us. Yeah, there is so much disclosure happening right now. I don't think because we're in the middle of it, Mr. C, that we... Give it its full credit for just what we are seeing right now being dumped on us in the world. Right. Uh, supposedly Trump's uh, making an announcement about right now, but uh, for me, I read it as he was supposed to do it yesterday, 11, so I'm not certain it's real. It's supposed to drop two massive things on us today. I'm looking for, if anything, he's just going to tell us who his VP is and maybe his secretary of state or something, and that's about it. Unfortunately, it's sort of like the, the cart before the horse. He's got to get elected first, and he's got a long road to go before, between now and November. Um, oh, yeah, this one could be big. Charlie just saying shareholders voted Friday to make Trump Media and Technology Group the parent company of True Social, a publicly traded entity. It would be an instant cash influx for uh, Trump, which would be uh, much needed right now. And one thing, Mr. C, you 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 will get this, and I notice the time, so we got to wrap anyways. Um, all the memes, all the left coming out. Well, if Trump were that wealthy, he'd have no problem crapping $450, $500 million to cover his bond. You know, he's worth billions. I forget what the latest is, but, you know, he lost money, so he's worth, I think, like $3 billion or something. And I don't know how accurate. You guys sound off in chat and straighten me out um, on that one. Um, just because you read so many different reports and it goes up and it goes down, property value this, deal that. But could you imagine just leaving $500 million, even if you were worth, three, let's just say $3 billion, to keep the math simple, that chunk of your income sitting there, let's just take, you know, in a normal life, you know, just middle class family, uh, you can claim that you're worth about 200000 because of the equity in your home, which you have in savings, minus what you owe, minus, you know, what you've got to pay, your loan outstanding. Could you crap, you know, a third or or so of your entire supposed net worth in cash in a few days? Most of us would have to go apply for a second mortgage, maybe refinance the home, maybe sell one or two of the cars, uh, et cetera, to be able to come up with that. Now you're going to look at it at that level. Or let's say you do have it as cash, but you put it in a six month CD. And now you got to take massive fines and tax consequences for removing some. Maybe if it's in your IRA or your retirement, the entire notion that they're using shows me how absolutely economically, financially ignorant mainstream media is and the left. This situation is exactly what the Constitution was all about, as well as the Declaration of Independence. 
because this is what would happen in England during that time period. But what you're talking about right now is a targeted uh, operation to strip him of any ability to make sure he is not reelected. And I think it is so un-American and against the Constitution that the judge, the AG from New York, and various others need to be picked up right away, need to be picked up right away, sent to Gitmo, and adjudicated right now. Oh, for me, I mean, they're just lackeys to get promised this. And now, of course, there is uh, much chatter rumor after Trump's lawyer. Uh, they are tracking about 10 million bucks that came from uh, possibly came from special accounts and funneled towards Judge Engeron for, for that judgment. And it's looking like money went to Letitia James. Money went to Fannie Willis. It is looking very, very suspect. And these people are willing to sell their souls and corrupt the legal system. It appears we'll see if there's a truth to these things as we go forward. But it is a uh, it's a sad it's a sad commentary. It's the result of wokeism. It needs to be stopped. Um, we need a complete cleansing of our political and military situation. Uh, and it's just unbelievable for me. As a fact, I'm very sick and I really am angry, and I want to see some of these. Superintendents of these academies strung up. I don't give a damn if they're admirals or generals. They need to be strung up because they are committing treason. Anyway, that's another that's another conversation. <laughs> that's another conversation. Uh, before we get too far down the rabbit holes, I, I see my voice is starting to go. Oh, yeah, we need to roll it. I apologize. Uh, I want to say thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate the questions. Uh, I look forward to this every week. And uh, let's hope we get paid this week. But if not, I will. And again, if we do, I'll see you next Friday. Thank you very much. Take care, Mr. C. You too. Bye. Uh, it is. It's cathartic form after all those years of persecution, uh, being forced to stay quiet. It probably is very therapeutic for him to be able to get in here and uh, give us his two cents on it. Uh, middle of where? No. Mainstream media and CIA. Mockingbird media. Yeah. Uh, Doing the exact same thing since uh, you were born in 57. They've been doing it for as long as time. This is just the latest name of the agencies. And it is our job to bring the depth to Mockingbird Media. Stab it in the heart. I hate to go after a lovely um, fowl like that because I like birds. But this, uh, this particular bird must die. Uh, and I mean... In a representative way, I don't mean somebody actually has to die, guys. Uh, let's see if we all get together in there and pitch a little currency could influence the decision makers to let this go now. Uh, Greg, you're going to tell me what you mean. <laughs> we should bribe them to do the right thing. <laughs> are right, we going to sing happy birthday real quickly? And then I'm certain we have Matt and Evan and the crew waiting to get in here for just a few minutes to get us prepped and excited about them joining tomorrow. Um, hubby Tom, 57, 88th birthday to Joan. Of course, we had D Wayne, and then I wrote down another one, and I can't even read. It looks like can tap. Woohoo! I should have been a doctor. Casey, uh, let's see to all those celebrating. Let's sing quickly and then see if we can get a call from those gurus. <clears throat> well, wait a minute, then I got distracted again. Oh, look, a pretty fish. Uh, a butterfly. According to the prophetic word from Julie Green, these are the days of Hammond. No harm will come to his David, as God calls Trump. All of this indictments will go nowhere, and it will all backfire. It has certainly been backfiring. So they tell me it's your birthday. Well, happy birthday, darling. May you live, may you love. Make all your dreams come true. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. It's heavy at bribery. Whoa. Kind of like when you bribe your kids uh, for, you know, $20 an A or something on the report card. You know, I, I don't mean it. I mean, I guess it's bribery, but <laughs> all right. Waiting for uh, Matt and Lucas and any of the fellas if they want to join us. Mm, yeah, read some of those. I got. Uh, wish I could just give my opinion on everything. Wouldn't be here long if I did. Hello, Matt. 
Hey, good morning, Mark. How are you doing? Man, I'm fantastic. I'm tickled. I'm excited about life. Really am too. I'm really excited. You know, just uh, looking outside, we got a bunch of snow. Everything's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, really, you're gonna wait until uh, late in March before you decide to have a winter? Um. Yeah. <laughs> no, it should melt. The plow guy was crazy last night. He fell plowing in front of my place from two to four, and it and it could it could take a minute to plow my place. I think he's just trying to let us know. Hey, I'm out there once this year. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to pay me next year. <laughs> he's, he's got my house and about six neighbors. But God, what's this from two to four? He just woke everybody in the neighborhood up, I'm sure. Scraping the ground. But anyways, yeah. So uh, Lucas should be calling in in a second. And then, uh, you want to score the specials here before we go? Um, yeah, give me just a second to get all of that pulled up. Actually, I think I may have. Yeah, yeah, I did. Give me just a second. Um, and then I saw somebody mention Hortensia. Um, tell you, uh, love the lady. Danger said Hortense, uh, sweet queen, good lady, was a good lady. Is has something happened? You know, we used to talk on occasion and just catch up, and I've not talked to her in probably a year or more. I can't remember the last time uh, we spoke, but uh, if she's out there. Sweet Queen, holler, and I'll do the same. I don't know if your number has changed or not. Would be good to catch up. Now I'm waiting for uh, the computer to uh, cooperate and give me your website. Ah, here we go. Now let's do it. Talk about the specials. Okay, here we go, you guys. So, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Mark, you were saying we need some more uh, mushroom products and... Uh, you know, and actually, we got quite a few calls. They wanted this product, so we got this one done right away. And, uh, so we got the turkey tail there, and we're going to give that free away today just to kick it off with six different products. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and the bottom line, you guys, is we always try to give you a great deal, you know, so uh, that's the end of our game. You know, we get the product, and uh, Lucas is a manufacturer, so you can get a good deal on it. And then um, we got that under uh, Nutrition Excellence label there. That's uh, talk about that later, Mark. But uh, yeah, we're gonna put a bunch of mushroom products under that label, and uh, that stuff. Just to let you know what it does, it yep. builds your immunity. Hold on, I got Lucas calling in. Now we have both of you. Hey, Lucas. Hey, sorry to bother you. You keep going. Oh, okay. Okay. So, the main things with the turkey tail, you guys, it boosts your immunity, reduce inflammation, improve cognitive function, and boost gut health. And, uh, you know, and we're going to get into the mushrooms a lot, you know, because uh, that's just the way it is with uh, the market out there. We got so many calls to get this product, so this is one of the First ones we did here. I mean, we've always had the uh, the lion's mane for sure, and we got the matrix, you know, with all the different uh, mushrooms together. But uh, I don't know. We got a lot of calls on this one. People wanted it, so here it is. And uh, you get it with uh, if you get over 150 bucks, you get five million Bolivar with the order. But down below, we got uh, we got this on special here today. It's thirty dollars. You get ten thousand dong free. With the uh, turkey tail and then uh, we got the uh, four lion's mane gummies with three turkey tail we got the miracle gold uh, uh, four for a hundred free turkey tail 120 pounds the immunity we got the free turkey tail 120 pounds now the thing about that is you guys the immunity and the turkey tail with the immunity there I don't think you can get a better combo to a flip and then we got the uh, Miracle Gold with the uh, free turkey tail, the double bottle, 95 bucks. And then uh, let's see, we got the regular gummies, the sleep gummies with the free stuff there. And then we got all the other products going down the line. If you don't see any product in special, you guys just uh, go hit the buttons on top, you know, and uh, then you can just pop in there and uh, get whatever you want there. Ooh. And then, uh, yeah, it's lost it. it uh, no, 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 you're there. We can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay, cool. And, uh, 
Yeah, that's it for the specials here, and then you get the currency at 150 and uh, the Boulevard, and then uh, and then that's the new product. And uh, check it out; it's a great product. You guys, no, it's kind of take a theater. Kind of neat. Sore stomach, man, and it kind of went away. So, um, Penny just said, "Hey, can we split four for hundred? Like two of the line, two of the miracle, two of the what? That actually some kind of." grab bag or thing for your different mushroom products might be a good special sometime soon. So you can try one of each. Yeah, you guys yeah, can well, do that now. If you want to put that in the notes on the order, the guys filling the orders will read that. They'll do that for sure. You know, if you got the 30 count gummies, they'll mix and match in there. You know, and uh, yeah, for sure. And the one thing is we can't uh, we can't do the Delta 8 in that because uh, it's just uh, got a limited amount as soon as we get some in next week we can uh, do it with that too so but uh any other ones you just put in the notes like half sleep half regular half uh lions me half miracle gold gummies and, oh. uh, we can do that just put in the notes you guys and they'll be all right um so yeah and if you have a question always call evan when in doubt call evan right now um, I just saw one totally unrelated. Hello, Mark. I have a question about the Yotillin and Marillion. Zim, are these values? Scott, I don't know. I've tried to get a uh, concise answer from a couple of my sources, and I can't get any level of agreement, so I don't know what to tell you. Um, all right. I'm, uh, I'm looking now for any more questions. Although, Lucas, how are you before we dive in again? I'm good. I was, uh, I was, you know, kind of um, at our, uh, you know, because I, I don't know if people know this, like, I, uh, just because of my kids and stuff, like, we ended up moving our facility, and so I've been kind of bouncing back and forth, and uh, it's, been, it's been a rough week. Wednesday was my birthday, though, so that, that was enjoyable. And I missed that. You did. You did. I was actually going to come on and my flight, you know, with, uh, I was actually coming back, um, on Wednesday. And so there was just so much going on. Like I was just, I wanted to come on, drop in on the show, but it just, it, time did not allow it. Um, that we had, uh, the King dude, AKA Mike church for uh, whiskey and wisdom Wednesday. It was, it was an exceptionally good whiskey and wisdom. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's iconic in talk show radio. Uh, he was probably what I think the number two show in the uh, in talk show radio behind uh, Rush. Uh, he he's just he's iconic, and uh, we had we had a good time. Oh, that's awesome. We had a great time on Wednesday. Wasn't the yeah, typical yeah, whiskey really wisdom. It was still fun. Man, he was that was really good to listen to, Mark. That was awesome. It really was. That was mm. He reminded me of, I don't know why, Michael Savage, but, he, you know. He oh, he does kind of. Yeah, I don't know why, but he does. I uh, hadn't thought about that one. But I do. Uh, so, Lucas, wait. I think it was Wednesday. Was it Wednesday when you sent me the uh, text and the picture of the chair on your birthday? It was. It was. Because I, uh, I, I was working with those guys on Wednesday. And, uh, you know, they, they called me. And then they, at the same time, simultaneously, they sent me that email. Or was it text? Text. It was an email. Yeah. Um, um, but I think I just screenshotted the email. I think is what it came up to be, uh, for the chair that it's ready to ship. So, uh, hopefully we're going to, they, they have a, uh, talk to them. They have a packaged up everything. And then, uh, they're going to, I believe Monday or Tuesday, try to get it, uh, on its way. Oh, that's just huge. Yeah. He sent me a picture. I, uh, I'll, I'll admit I got a little teary. But I didn't want to. I've had people ask Wednesday night. I've had people ask a little earlier. And I was like, you know, I'm not giving an update until we have Lucas, Lucas and Matt on here because they deserve it with everything they made happen. They deserve the uh, accolades uh, when they get the uh, update. No, no, I, I was excited to hear from them. I really am. So uh, that's going to it's going to be, I, I think, pretty quick, actually. Uh, we're still we're still trying to finalize timelines uh, of uh, when it'll actually arrive, but uh, it's going to be I think quicker than you think. Uh, yeah, that I'm, I'm, I can't share the excitement level here. Now, um, I, I do take the uh, opportunity here to find out uh, just how old, if you're uh, willing, Lucas. Had some people asking. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. So I, I'm going to tell you a story that goes with this. So I am 
I am uh, 39. And uh, not, not a big deal. Matt calls me a little, a little pup, uh, which is fine. Um, but, uh, but I was eating Tuesday night and uh with my partners and they uh you know the, the waitress came up and she was like you know they were saying oh it's his birthday tomorrow you know we were having a good time and, and uh, my partner was like i will give you this hundred dollar bill if you can guess his age to the dot and uh she was like I'll, I'll, I'll try that and so she thought about it for two seconds 49. oh That's what she guessed. oh Wow. An entire decade. I like, oh, oh, oh. Wow. A whole decade off. Yeah, and for me. not get the $100 bill. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, okay, okay, wow. I, 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 think, I think the stress of uh, the businesses uh, has taken a toll on my body, apparently. Oh, look, I mean, you know, I just spent, you know, I just had a lunch with you, what, like two months ago or whatever. And yeah, yeah. and you, you did not look that old. I mean, this is a rough two months for you. I mean, I'll tell you what, my partner's definitely got a good crack out of that. <laughs> uh, you know, out of that uh, age difference. <laughs> AJ, the eleventh anniversary of thirty nine, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, we gotta go to that yeah. same uh, place you're at, and then. Uh, Get the same waitress, and then we're going to ask her how she thinks I am compared to you. How much the difference? Oh. She'll probably she'll probably say you're forty five or something, you're right? It's ridiculous <laughs> like that. Oh. Oh, Patriot Mama, how old was the waitress? You know, eighteen? Did she have you know? <laughs> she was probably twenty four, twenty five. You know, mid twenties. And, oh, and well, I mean. You know, it's just it's just hard, you know. Great body, you know, but my beard is uh, turning white, you know. So it probably threw her a little bit of a curveball. Mm. Yeah, she should. Yeah, she's got to learn to say younger ages, you know. Even though she knows, I mean, hey, you know, you she was trying to she was trying to win that hundred dollar bill. She was trying to get after it as she possibly could. Yeah. Oh, okay. And she was, she was counting. If, if somebody says, guess the age, you know that they, you know, think you look, you know, younger than you do or whatever. So you should automatically guess older, right? Um, so she was probably yeah. just out of abundance caution going, oh, man, they're making me guess, which means he's probably not the age I think he is. So I'm going to add 10 years to what I think. She so probably actually <laughs> nailed it. I got, yeah, well, I got that oceanfront yeah, property in Indiana to sell you too. Perfect. I'll buy it. Yeah, Barbara, did you immediately start working on a new face cream? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm starting to. I actually a uh, long time ago I used to make like you know HA serums and face uh, vitamin C serums, tea tree serums, uh, organ morning serums. So yeah, I, I'm I'm going to start making them next week again start applying it because apparently um, I do not age well. And uh, by the time I'm Matt's age, I'm going to look like I'm 140. Oh, I thought Matt was 140. Oh. Oh. I'm just trying to make you feel better. I'm just trying to make you feel better there, Lucas. <laughs> Matt's, a, Matt's actually only 45. No, nobody got that one. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. This is the truth. If those bed deals are that oh yeah, yeah. Say, say, yeah. You can pretty much say what you uh, would like as long as you don't. Uh, well, I don't know. Just say allegedly. Allegedly, the med men, if, if they can, if they do work, I'm gonna on the way down to. I want to go back to the age of probably five, you know, truthfully, and so I can hang around a bunch of little kids. But anyways, um, because uh, they're fun, you know, they're funner. But I want to. I'll stop at about twenty-five so I can play football for a little bit. And then I'm gonna go lower. Oh yeah. Well, well, I tell you what though, Matt, it would be fun just for a little bit to like, like you're saying, like the you know the little kid age. Because I would love to go with my uh, with my kids. Like I'm gonna be the same age as my kids. Oh god. Be able to yeah. Play with them at that at that age. Like, oh, it yeah, would be. It would just be a 
Yeah. There's, there's so many more things for kids to do now. Man. When I was a kid, you, you had the edge of sketch, you know, and the, the, the edge Now they got like trampoline parks and, I mean, you name it. Oh, my God. <laughs> trampoline park. I'd go nuts in there if I was a little kid. So I'd be there early. I would just be bouncing around and they'd have to carry me out of there at the end of the deal. So, yeah, it'd be fun. All righty. So, anyways, get in there and order. Oh, we didn't even tell you how to get in there. You go to thecbdgurus.com, go to Marcy Wholesale, Wholesale, and put in uh, lowercase K R A M C B D. And uh, yeah, you're all set to order. And uh, yeah, that uh, product we're giving out with the other one's free. That's a thirty dollar value for sure. And uh, yeah, just give it a shot, you guys. It's uh, good stuff. My wife started taking, and her stomach was hurt. No, I, I really like the turkey tail mark a lot. Like, you know, in each one, as we start to kind of release these, you know, all these different types of mushrooms, uh, you know, it, it's really, really cool. And what people like normally for turkey tail, it's kind of like what Matt was saying, you know, the immune support, you know, really has a great amount of like uh, uh, polysaccharide K, I believe, um, that really helps uh, boost the immune system. Uh, you know, it has gut health. And, mm -hmm. You know, but what people don't talk about a lot is that it's also, it has a ton of antioxidant properties as well um, with the phenols and flavonoids. Um, and it really kind of works in correlation with CBD explicitly because it really helps uh, reduce inflammation in your body as well. So something that people really don't talk about on the turkey tail, but uh, it does a really, really good job with. Uh, no, I'm excited for when you start act, adding things. I don't know, like reishis or uh, you know things like that. The reishi, the cordyceps. The cordyceps, uh, the cordyceps can be exciting. The cordyceps are pretty awesome as well. So we're we're currently uh, in formulation stage with the cordyceps, um, and then uh, the reishi, and then the uh, what's my brain just fried. Uh, there, there's a couple other ones we're working on as well too. Um, but uh, no, we're excited about it. The Shaga, yeah. The, um, so that, that'll work really well, um, and especially in kind of coordination with some of these, uh, uh, you know, the, the Miracle Gold and stuff like that. So trying to see how it interacts, uh, you know, with while taking it with, like, CBG. Um, so I, I'm playing around with it. Don't worry. I, it's uh, definitely been a fun venture. All right, I'm going to ask you one question, and then I'm going to save the rest of the questions for tomorrow. I had one person ask, uh, do you have anything uh, for, uh, actually, we had two. One, do you have anything for bone cancer? Another was, do you have anything for gout? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, that, you know, you got to make some dietary changes. But, I mean, I would certainly think a lot of the CBD products would help with sleep and pain, but. I would say probably if I if it were me, I probably like my cousin is really bad gal and he see like I I thought like he didn't tell me till the tail end of him, you know, going through it. But uh yeah, the the pain um definitely with like a water soluble um would probably help the pain significantly. Um I think the miracle gold would work for that because when I take miracle gold at night before bed. I think a lot of it, my feet get clammy in the morning, so I'm thinking that it would help the gout because I don't have the gout, and I know my brothers did. So. Well, you want to be careful with that because that, that, the miracle goal is CBG, Matt. I mean, you're an animal, but, man, I, I can't take the CBG awesome. before I go to bed because it keeps me up. Like, it's too much energy. I know, but I just don a can of the drink, you know, so then the Delta 9, I go to sleep. And then I, I usually take Delta 8, but if I did that, I'll take some Delta 9 to the drink, you know, so you just got oh, to kind of know saying. how to mix and match there, and that's, and that'll help you to sleep. I don't I might take the sleep gummy, truthfully. I just think I got so much stuff sitting on the counter sometimes that uh, I don't overdo it, but, you know, when you're, when you're at the warehouse every day, you, you get what you want, you know, so. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, absolutely. You're, you're Matt, Matt's our test monkey, guys. Well, you know, I got a couple other ones, too. And, uh, yeah, for sure. And uh, they, they tell me exactly what, 
what they like or don't like. But uh, I'll tell you what, I'm really becoming a fan of the drinks and the water side for sure. Oh, I'm, I'm just, from the moment I tried the first one, you had me sold. Yeah, this stuff is uh, got my zero calorie, you know, and uh, and uh, you can't beat it, you know. I, 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 probably, I probably weigh half my weight if I drink the beer at zero calories when I was drinking it all my life. Well, yeah. up until I had my stroke. But I started at the age of four, so we know, know the stories because everybody, mm. all my relatives, always drank beer. I know it's hard for people to understand down south because a lot of people don't drink as much, but here all they do is drink beer and stuff. Yeah, like Minnesota that. tap water. Actually, the, when they made beer back in the old days, 1800s, it was a way to purify the, what they were drinking because that's all they had that was beer sometimes, you know, except for well water. So, yeah, that was it. Beer and well water. Doing it at THC water, this, we'd all be, all my relatives would probably still be alive. Yeah. <laughs> they would be, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, I can only imagine how fashionable Aunt Tootie's uh, Moo Moo would be uh, now if she were still with us. Oh, geez. Man, we haven't talked about the Aunt Tootie in a long time. <laughs> yeah, there was, uh, when there were all girls in that farm, we had to run through us. And I, I forget how many it is. I have to look at the picture at my sister's house. It's either, it's either 9, 10, or 11. And they married all the boys next door. And when they ran out of boys, the other ones just left at the age of 14, most of them. Yeah, people don't realize, but back then they used to get married when they were like 15, 16, 14, you know. And uh, by the time, you know, they seen me, man, they were probably in their 50s, man. They were just wiped out, 60s, you know. So, yeah, things were different back then. You know, they weren't. They weren't all fashionable either. Nowadays, everybody's bombarded with fashion. All they had back then was probably the Sears catalog, truthfully. And uh, they probably didn't get that most of the time. They probably used it in the outhouse too soon or something. Y'all are too funny. (laughs) All right, we got to wrap this thing, guys. And we'll see you in the morning at 9.45. We're going to start a few minutes early tomorrow so we can maximize our questions for uh, Matt. Lucas and for uh, Evan. Right, for sure. Maybe I should have Evan come on and answer some questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't know about squirrels like you know about squirrels. Yeah, they're beautiful, man. They're just awesome. I'm like Dr. Doolittle here in my neighborhood. It's truly just beautiful. <laughs> I love all the animals. I really do. <laughs> I, uh, Kevin and Lucas told me you were more like Mr. Doolittle. The doctor do missed it. Yeah. <laughs> <Doop is doodle. laughs> All right, you guys. Hey, thanks for having us on, Mark. And we'll see you tomorrow. Hey, you guys are great. Thanks much. Take care. Right, see you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I always have fun with them guys. They have become very close personal friends. And if I like you, I pick on you. <laughs> Just so you know how that works. If I don't pick on you, I probably don't like you. Uh, <laughs> I am part way through now, Juno. I just want you to know I am part way through and my mind is expanding. <laughs> All right, guys. I do think Zester will be on tonight. Uh, <clears throat> much to get done today. And I will uh, talk to you guys later. Uh, also, uh, there are reports that Trump is on CNN right now. A number of you guys have sounded off in chat. Uh, More on that later if it is anything earth-shattering or breaking. Bye, guys.